Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to make uh, this Voronoi vase. Um, uh, we are just going to apply the Voronoi in a certain area of the surface. We are also going to give this uh, kind of uh, open pattern uh, on the edge of the vase. And then uh, we are going to um, make sure that the cells of the Voronoi are bigger near the uh, edge and they go smaller as they go um, inside or within the, the vase. I hope you enjoyed. So I just made a surface on Rhino. It's just a normal revolution. And now we are going to start working uh, with it on Grasshopper. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the Voronoi. Uh, so I'm going to get that component, Voronoi 3D. And I'm just going to gather all the components I need for that here. And for that, I will need also the populate geometry that is going to give me the random points on the surface to generate the Voronoi. Then I'm going to need a bounding box. Um, and then I'm going to need to scale that bounding box. Okay. So um, the first thing, uh, sorry, before we start or, or before we make the Voronoi, we need to, or uh, the Voronoi is going to be only in a certain area of our surface. So I'm going to um, divide that surface or, or I'm going to um, extract a part of that surface uh, with the component called um, isotrim. So isotrim is going to trim that surface in a domain. Okay, and that domain, I'm going to go get in mats and I'm going to go get a construct domain or a square domain. Actually, I'm going to get the other one, this one right here, sorry, the first one. Okay, and I'm going to connect it here. And we won't be able to see anything because we don't know the domain of that surface. We don't know how big that surface is. So uh, to make it easier, we're going to reparameterize that surface. Okay, and what that will do is just uh, allow us to work with um, values within zero and one. Zero is going to be this, uh, no surface and one is going to be 1% of the surface in directions U and V. So I'm going to find out uh, which direction I need. I'm just going to create a slider and I'm going to connect it, for instance, here. And there you can see I'm extracting, if I turn this off, yeah, I'm extracting that part of the surface. So if I go to zero, I'll have the whole surface. And if I go to one, I'll have, uh, I'll go to the full value of the main surface. Okay. And that size of the surface is going to have, the, or that area of the surface, the one that's going to have the Voronoi. So after that's done, I'm going to apply this here. Okay. And then I'm going to create a Voronoi by connecting this here. And as we already have explained in previous um, tutorials, you will see uh, that our surface is um, overlapping our Voronoi. And that could give us some trouble. So what I'll do is just, I'm going to scale our banding box. One the box is going to be this one. Uh, I could connect it here. Okay. And that way the surface is going to be inside the box, but I don't want it to be in the limit of the box. I want it to be, I want the box to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to connect this here. I'm going to get the volume component to find the center. That's uh, from where I'm going to scale from. And then I'm going to, uh, just make a slider, or sorry, not a slider. I'm just going to make a panel with a number that I'm not going to change because I just wanted to keep it that way. So it's going to be 10% bigger. It could be less percent bigger, but 10% is all right. Okay, but it's important that it's bigger. And then I'm going to connect this here and I'm going to turn this off. That way we make sure that the full surface is within our bounding box. Com it's completely inside, okay? Um, once that is done, what we are going to do is get the brep brep component to find uh, the intersection of the cells with our original surface. Now we're going to work with our original surface. If I turn turn this off, you will see our Voronoi. Okay. So um, what we are going to do, or the first thing that we we're going to do next, is find out. Uh, I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to turn this off. 
and you will see um, that our uh, Vornoi has some uh, open, sorry, open cells and some closed ones. The ones that are close to the edge, they are uh, open. Sorry, they're uh, yeah, they are open, and these ones are closed. So we need to divide, or we need to split uh, that list. We need to find out which ones are open and which ones are closed. And for that, I'm going to get this component. Uh, what it does is just test if a curve is, um, if I flatten it and I put my uh, mouse on top of it, you'll be able you, you'll be able to see if it's a closed curve or if or if it's a periodic curve. You can see it's a true false. It, it, it gives us a volume. So uh, what can I do with a vol volume? I'll get the dispatch component that what we'll do is just I'm going to connect this here. Okay, and I'm going to actually going to flatten it and this one as well. And what that will do is just divide our open cur uh, curves to our closed curves. Okay, so here you'll have 18 curves, the ones that are on B, which are the ones that are false, and 82 closed curves, which are the ones that are true. Okay, so now that now that we have split them, we're going to work them, we're going to work with them separately. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? So for the ones on top, uh, as you will, you have seen in the design, you can see on the edge of our design that we have well this kind of finish, and then we have uh, the rest of the cells. Okay. So keeping that in mind, we are going to make the uh, first shape or the shape close to the uh, A edge first. So um, we're going to go open, we're going to work with these curves. So um, what I'll do is just going to find um, the corners or verti vertice, vertices of those uh, curves with the discontinuity, and then I'm going to scale them uh inward okay so i'm going to find the center of all of those each of those uh group each of those groups of points and then i'm going to scale them so the geometry that i'm going to scale is this one this is the center and i'm going to make a slider uh 0.80 for instance and then I'm going to turn this off and turn this off as well. And then I'm going to make a polyline with each of, sorry, polyline with each of those uh, groups and those polylines that you can see here, uh, I'm going to leave them uh, open or periodic. Okay. Once that that's done, I need to connect the end of those polylines to the end of each cell. I need to make a line here, a line here, and so on. So if I find the endpoints of the polylines, turn this off, okay, and I also find the endpoints of my original cells, which are these ones, and I'm gonna graft this. Then I can make lines connecting the start of each whole line to the start of each cell. Next thing that I'm gonna do is join those curves. So I can uh, use them to cough my surface. Here you can see them. We have already built them. Now that this is done, we're going to work with our uh, closed curves, which is uh, the output A of our uh, dispatch component. 
So we are going to scale them as well. And we're going to scale them the same way with the discontinuity. And then the average of each of those points. The factor I'm going to use the same for now. The geometry that I'm going to scale is going to be this one. And then I'm going to go get a polyline component. And this time I want to make, I want to close it. Want them to be closed. So I'm going to right click on the output. I'm oh, sorry, on the uh, lower input, okay, which is if it's closed or not. And I'm going to invert the volume so it's true. So if I turn everything off, I'll be able to see uh, those in your curves. Once that I have them, I'm going to pull them towards my surface so I can cut. Uh, the surface. I'm going to flatten this. And then I'm going to go get my surface. And that way those curves are going to be touching the surface. And once that I have this, I'm going to split this surface. With the surface split component. And as we have mentioned in previous um, tutorials, what this gives us is all the trim surfaces, uh, but what we want now is just the main surface. So uh, to find the main surface, right, I'm going to uh, calculate the area of each of those little surfaces and we'll see that uh, one of them is going to be bigger. Uh, to find that one out, I'm going to go and get the sort list component and what I want to sort are the areas of the surfaces. And if I put my, I'm going to turn this off, if I put my mouse there, we'll see that the last one is considerably much bigger than the rest. So that's the one that we need. So I'm going to reverse this list and this one as well. And I'm going to go get a list item component, which by default is going to give us the first item of a list. And there we have our main surface. I'm going to come back here and turn this off. Turn this off as well, and turn this off. And we have our surface, okay? So uh, now that all of this is done, um, we still need to uh, change a, a little detail. You can see in our design that uh, the lower the cells of the Voronoi are, uh, the smaller they get, okay? So the further from uh, the edge, the smaller they get. So uh, what we are, how, how are we going to make this? So um, we are going to find that we can we can do it in several several ways, um, but uh, let's do it. Uh, let's try to do it with the uh, top edge. So what I'm going to do is find the top edge of our main surface surf, uh, surface. Okay, we're going to go here. And then we got the naked edge edges. Uh, it's going to be only one. So I'm going to go get a curve component so I understand what I'm getting. And you can see it's just there. Okay. And what we will do is just, I'm going to pull it, bring it here. And what we're going to do is change the size of or the value of this um, factor. Okay, the scale factor according to how far uh, those uh, cells are from this edge. Okay, so uh, for that, I'm going to get a curve closest point component. Uh, 
and this is going to be my curve and my points are going to be these ones right here I'm going to take this further and this one here I'm going to flatten it and once we have those uh, points we have uh, or this component uh, will give us several outputs and one of them is going to be the distances of those points to that curve and that's what we need now I'm going to turn this off and um, so with those distances I'm just going to scale them or remap them with the remap component okay so I can make those numbers um, accordingly to a scale factor because those distances are big numbers if I connect this straight here I'm just gonna have a mess so I just need to scale those values and for that I'm gonna need the bound component and then I'm gonna uh, need the target of the list that I want to uh, or the limits of that list the bounds of that list uh, within I want it to fit in fit it in okay so uh, the scales are going to be uh, let's say that the closest point is going to be the same value and the furthest point let's make another slider and connect it here so if I connect this uh, here uh, wait I'll need to craft it now uh, we have the shape that we need okay uh, I'm gonna go get more points on the populate geometry let's take for instance 300 and we can make uh, this slightly bigger let's go to 0.9 and this one let's make it even smaller let's go to 0 0.2 and that's it uh, the last thing that we are going to do is just uh, give volume to it okay so for that I'm going to make it a mesh I'm going to go to the mesh um, components and with this component I can, I'm going to make it a mesh why do I want to make it a mesh because then I'm going to use the Weaverbird plugin to make it thick I'm going to give it maybe 2 mil of thickness and we could even, even uh, smooth it out with the Weaverbird Scott Moles Clark subdivision what it does is just breaks the faces of that um, of that mesh into smaller faces so you have even more resolution so that's it I hope you enjoyed and uh, uh, leave me a comment uh, if you liked it